Okay, this video is going to talk about reducing fractions to lowest terms using what's called prime factorization. So in order to do prime factorization, we need to know what a prime number is. And a prime number is any number that has only factors 1 and itself. So starting out with those prime numbers, the first prime number is 2, because you can get 2 by 1 times 2, and that is it. The next prime number is 3 followed by 5. Notice that we skipped 4 because you can get 4 with 1 times 4 and 2 times 2. We skip 6 because you can do 3 times 2 and 1 times 6. We have 7, 11, 13, 17, and then it, it continues on. So in order to do prime factorization we needed to know that Basically, we're going to take a whole number and break it down into its prime factors. And every, every number can be broken down into prime factors. Some are already prime, fa prime numbers, but for the example 36, that is not. And so if we take 36, we're going to break this down into prime factors. And so what I need to think about is what numbers can I multiply together to get 36? I could do 4 times 9. I could do 6 times 6. I could do 3 times 12. It doesn't matter which one of those you choose, you'll get the same answer either way. I'm just going to go with 4 times 9. Now looking at both of those numbers, I know 4 and 9 are both not prime. They're called composite numbers. So I can keep breaking those down. Now I can take 4 and split it into 2 times 2, and 9 can be split into 3 times 3. And when I look at all these numbers, these are now all prime numbers. So my prime factorization, 436, is 2 times 2 times 3 times 3. And if I think about this, 2 times 2 is 4, times 3 is 12, times 3 is 36. So my answer to that prime factorization is 36, which is what I started with up here. So in order to use prime factorization to reduce fractions, we're going to take both the numerator and denominator and find their prime factorizations. And then any common prime factors will be able to come up with a greatest common factor. So let's see this in action. If we take 12 and we do our prime factorization, 12, we can get 12 by 2 times 6 or 3 times 4. I'll do 2 times 6. And 2 is prime, but 6 is not, so 6 can then be split into 2 times 3. So for 12, my prime factorization is 2 times 2 times 3. For 42, my prime factors are, well, I need to see what can I multiply to get 42, and I know that I can do 6 and 7. Well, 7 is prime, but 6 is not, so 6 can be split into 2 times 3. And so my prime factorization for 42 is 2 times 3 times 7. Now looking at these sets of prime factors, I want to look and see what's common between them. And I notice that I have a 2 that's shared, and I have a 3 that's shared. And I don't have anything else that's in both of them. So now if I take those two prime factors and multiply them, 2 times 3, that gives me a prime factor factor or a greatest common factor of 6. And greatest common factor is the largest number that goes into both of those, 12 and 42. So what I want to do now is take 12 40 seconds and divide each of them by 6. Well 12 divided by 6 is 2 and 42 divided by 6 is 7. And so our prime or our sorry our, our fraction reduced to lowest terms is 2 sevenths. Another thing to notice is notice which fractions or which prime factors are left over. We have a 2 and we have a 7. That's not a coincidence that over here we have two sevenths. It's the leftovers after we take out the greatest common factor. So let's take a look at another fraction. We have 24 fifty-fourths. In this case we're going to do our prime factors again. So 24 can be split into, well I could do 2 times 12. I could have done 6 times 4 or 3 times 8, doesn't really matter. 2 is prime, but 12 can be split into 3 times 4, which can be split into 2 times 2. So for 12, our prime factors are 
2 times 2 times 2 times 3. And for 54, I can split that into, well, I think that's 6 times 9. And 6 can be split into 2 times 3. And 9 can be split into 3 times 3. So for 54, we have 2 times 3 times 3 times 3. So my greatest common factor here would be what matches up. And I have a 2 times a 2 that's in both. I have a 3 that's in both. And those are the only thing that else that matches up in both of them. So 2 times 3 is 6. So I just need to divide by 6. Now looking at this, I can also see that my before I do that, look at what's left over. Here I have 2 times 2. Well, 2 times 2 is 4. And here I have 3 times 3 that doesn't match up, so that's 9. So 4 ninths. Remember that. So let's go back and take our 24 50 fourths, and we're going to divide by 6. Well, 24 divided by 6 is 4, and 54 divided by 6 is 9. Remember 4 ninths from over here? Well, that's our answer here as well. 4 ninths is the reduced version in lowest terms of 24 50 fourths.